On today's podcast, we're talking about the way that a well-run organizational culture audit process can enhance the future culture you are aiming to create. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast, wherever you are and however you're coming to the podcast today. Welcome in. So glad you are here. We are dangerously close to 240 episodes on the podcast. We're in season eight. So welcome in. Any of you that have been with us from the very beginning, so glad this continues to add value to your life and your work. And if you're new to the podcast, so glad you're here. So glad this continues to grow and spread and reach new people. And uh, my invitation to you is to go back, check out old episodes, so many great micro pods with topics. If you're drawn to this podcast, then there'll be topics that certainly jump out to you. And uh, been very fortunate to have so many great thought leaders from around the globe join me for some great chats on this pod. So check out old episodes. My commitment to you, as always, on this pod is I want this to be a place for you to step back, for you to think for you to take a deep breath and think about your life, think about your work, think about the culture that you're trying to create with the people around you, the temperature that you're hoping to set, and uh, and then hopefully be filled with a little oxygen. Breathe a little oxygen into you so that you can breathe some oxygen into other people around you. So uh, before we dive into today's episode, if you will do me the quick favor, if you will rate the podcast five stars, uh, that's just a super important thing. So thanks to everybody that takes a moment, whatever platform you're on, just hit that smash the five stars, just hit it right now. That'd be great. And, uh, anybody that leaves an authentic review in your own voice, that's fantastic. That helps the algorithms find the podcast and share it with more people. So, uh, thanks to everybody that does that. And obviously anybody that shares the pod. So on social media with your colleagues, your network, uh, with your team at work and say, hey, let's listen to this episode and talk about it. All of those ways help amplify these messages. And that's the whole point. So thanks to everybody who does that. Uh, appreciate that very, very much. Many organizations do a great job of, quote unquote, taking the temperature within their organization. I've observed this for many, many years now, but they many organizations, they get very good at taking employee engagement surveys or other culture pulse surveys or pulse checks. But in my observation, uh, many organizations are not always good about taking the next step to do something with the findings. And more importantly, rather than just taking the temperature, is, quote unquote, setting the temperature for the future that you want. Thermometers take the temperature. Thermostats set the temperature. The best leaders, teams, and organizations do both. So on today's podcast, we're talking about the way that a well-run organizational culture audit process can enhance the future culture you are aiming to create. But before we dive into today's topic, let's pause, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Many teams and organizations right now are realizing that they need to do both. They need to engage the minds and hearts of their people in person, where everyone in the room can experience the energy of congregating together and find clarity for the road ahead. And they also need to continue to find ways to engage the minds and hearts of their people virtually with those who are working remotely or at a distance. So if you are in the process of planning your next team meeting, company all hands event conference or culture summit and are looking for support with a powerful keynote speech facilitated team conversations that are the currency for change or deeper development on leadership mindset and an intentional strategy for the culture you're trying to create i hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com 
jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. I hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. If we asked everyone on your team or throughout your organization, what would they say the temperature of your culture is? How would they describe the culture? What would be the strengths of the culture and what would be the opportunities that they see to strengthen it? Some leaders, teams, and organization know this very well and have a great pulse of their culture and know what the temperature is. And others, to be honest, are flying blind. And again, thermometers take the temperature and thermostats set the temperature. And the best leaders, teams, and organizations they understand the combination of doing both. Again, some places, as I've talked about and I've observed, they get, they get really good at taking the temperature, being that thermometer, but then they don't do anything with the results. And, and what they end up doing is they repeat the same pattern of about every 12 to 18 months. They say, okay, it's time to take another survey. But when they do that over and over and over again, what it ends up doing is actually deteriorating the culture because people start to tune it out that we're taking another survey, but the survey doesn't seem to mean anything. We don't ever do anything with the results. So, you know, the, the actual engagement starts to drop. And if all we do is take surveys and take the temperature, then that means we're not doing the important piece of setting the temperature. So I want to focus on some of the processes I've seen work well and ones that, that me and my team that we utilize when we support a team or organization with what I refer to as an organizational culture audit. We help lead a process that is not only going to help us take the current temperature, but help us develop a strategy for setting the temperature, being that thermostat for their future, and to stimulate progress in their culture shaping because we know culture shaping never stops. So the best organizations, the best leaders, the best teams know that every so often it's time to take the temperature and let's see where the opportunities are so that we can get a plan to set the temperature on the next stretch of our road ahead. And so if you want more information beyond today's podcast or support in a process like this, reach out and contact us and we'll get we'll dive into way more detail than we are on this podcast. But I just wanted to but this is a quick kind of, uh, you know, uh, sharing some of the high level pieces that I think are really important to the process so that at least it begins to engage your mind and heart and get you thinking, OK, are we are we doing this these kind of elements within our team and organization? But if you want more information or you're interested in support, reach out to us and we can certainly dive way deeper. But on this pod, I'm going to share five key observations and reflections on what I would deem to be a successful organizational culture audit process. So five observations and characteristics. One is you got to communicate. <laughs> now, this may seem obvious, but we've, you've got to communicate. I've seen so many leaders, teams, and organizations not do this well. And so, again, you got to communicate. The single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. So many places think they've communicated well with their people. And the reality is, it's illusion because they really haven't communicated things properly. And when I say communicate, I'm talking about through the entire process. So at the beginning, communicating why we are even doing this culture audit. What is the purpose? And the purpose, of course, is to is to get a, you know, a, a current day uh, look at at how we would take the temperature for the organization, but it's not just for that. It's to help us get a strategy for how to to continue to make the culture even better 
and to strengthen the ecosystem. So to communicate the why of the process, the why of the purpose, and then to keep people updated along the way of what the findings are, what came out of this, and then most importantly, what is happening next. When people start to lose interest, they start to lose steam and the, the whole initiative will lose steam. They also start to lose trust when they don't see that anything is coming from it. And actually, when we don't communicate that well throughout the process, it actually can start to deteriorate the culture rather than helping it. So the first observation and characteristic is we got to be committed to communicating well throughout the entire process. And that's on a number of different ways. And again, when we dive into it with clients, we, we help look at it from many different levels of how we're communicating and how we're doing it in many different ways. So, uh, But communication is key. The second thing I would point out is uh, I think there's a leadership team and discovery phase. The best processes have alignment uh, with the senior leadership team to make sure, again, they're in alignment around why we're doing this and what the plan is for this. They're also uh, gathering input from that executive leadership team and, in fact, putting them through a, some assessments to, to get their feedback and see from their angle of vision across the organization. Uh, we do some heat mapping stuff as a part of our processes to help uh, begin to, to extract some of that information. And also it's an opportunity to get clear on expectations and what that communication plan is with the senior team so that, again, you've heard me talk about what is honored will be cultivated. We want to make sure that we're honoring the process and honoring how we're going to bring people into participation in the process but that's an opportunity to make sure that we engage at that leadership leadership team kind of discovery phase. The survey is one piece of it. Many organizations, again, this is the third thing I'm going to observation characteristics is around the a survey. Many f- places think that's the only piece of the puzzle is just take a survey. Well, it is it is an important piece of the puzzle, but I don't think it's the only piece. Again, I think there's some layers to this for the most uh, successful processes. You know, we want to invite all voices in the organization to to participate. All are welcome and all are encouraged to participate. We want to get as high of a percentage as possible. And we don't want to, we don't also want to hit them with a thousand questions that takes them, you know, so much time uh, to, to take it that it's that it's boring or that it's a turnoff or that it's just a waste of their time and energy. But we found a sweet spot of about a battery of 50 to 60 questions that somebody can 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 do. We, we've got it really a kind of science down to a to, to wait to, to let I think the the actual time that we have kind of as the average is about 12 and a half minutes that it takes somebody to, to, to get through this battery of questions. But certainly less than 15 minutes, I think, is, is key. And, and in our process, we focus on these kind of key areas of culture shaping with those 50 or 60 questions. Key areas around clarity, these kind of four areas of clarity, clarity, impact, relationships, and leadership. And then a last section that we focus on kind of uh, uh, some battery of questions around the focus on the future state of the team and the organization. So the survey is an important piece of the puzzle, but it's not the only piece. The fourth observation and characteristic I would point out is uh, in a in a well run process is would involve some cross functional interviews, and so the best process is and again part of what we lead with teams is we select a cross section of cross fu- cross functional employees at many different layers throughout the organization to participate in beyond the survey a deeper dive into some individual interviews that help br- help bring even more kind of color to the nuances that begin to surface from those survey results in the survey phase. And this just adds great texture to the findings and helps us kind of dive a little deeper into, okay, what might the survey results really be telling us? And then the fifth observation and characteristics is, again, some places get great about just taking a survey, but then, you know, they may quickly share the results, but there really nothing ever comes of it. The best processes share and communicate the findings, but also the game plan. So the findings are clear, 
the report is shared, even if it's just an executive kind of report and the summary of the findings, but then a game plan and recommendations of how to help us better than set the temperature that we desire into the future. So each of them have these characteristics of communication throughout the process, a leadership team discovery phase, a survey that gives all hands and all voices a chance, cross-functional interviews to dive deeper, and great communication and game planning around what are the findings and the game plan to set the temperature into the future. Obviously, the team's focus and, 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 and rallying teammates' focus around the culture of the future and how we're going to coach, teach, develop, how we're going to bring everybody in alignment and a participation around the culture, all of that matters. We're all co-creators and participants in creating the culture that we want to be a part of. And the best not only talk about that, but they are engaged in doing that through every step of the process. So as always, I'll leave you with some questions to ponder along the way. How would you assess the temperature on your team or throughout your culture? What's your game plan for the future to not just take the temperature, but set the future culture that you want to create? Perhaps it's time for an organizational culture audit. So I hope today's episode got you thinking in some ways. If it, more information is helpful to you, uh, or if you just want to talk more about this, ch- you know, contact us either through the website, jasonvbarger.com, email us, info at jasonvbarger.com, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly help you with that. Remember, the future of, our, of leadership and our cultures is you, is me, is us. We have an opportunity to, to not only get clear on what is that temperature we're trying to set, but then to breathe oxygen into ourselves and others to to sustain us along that journey of of shaping that future culture that we want. We've got to be able to calibrate that thermostat together. And and remember that 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 all of us, we all play a role in shaping that future culture. So, I hope you'll continue to tune in and, and keep showing up to this content, keep sharing it with others, rate it leave a positive review, all of those things that we talked about. Hit five stars, of course. And remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostat together. Step back. Remember, be a thermostat and breathe good oxygen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using, and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.